Jack is the chairman of the Critical Minerals Institute. Can you tell me, give us some updates, some key updates on what's happening in the market right now in the critical minerals sector, starting perhaps with the energy fuels announcement about their new acquisition in Brazil? Energy fuels has, has bought a, the rights uh, to, um, to do mining for monazite in Brazil. And they have completed that transaction, and they're they're initiating uh, what they have to do to get ready to, to do the mining and processing of monazite in Brazil. Ultimately, this is to go to their White Mesa, Utah facility. Now, uh, the the president of uh, Energy Fuels told me a couple of days ago that he's looking for a 2025 target uh, to be running at full tilt. And I don't recall how much he said he was going to produce, but he did say it would be sufficient to bring his White Mesa rare earth operation into positive cash flow. And of course, you're going to be at PDAC. And one of yes. the things you're going to be doing at PDAC is talking about our upcoming Critical Minerals Institute Summit, June 14th and 15th, because we're going to have a real electric vehicle angle this year, real yes. automotive angle. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the themes that uh, you're putting together for this event? The automotive critical minerals actually are the battery minerals, of course, uh, lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, graphite, and the alternate and energy production and storage minerals, i.e., for things like rare earths and, of course, copper and its alloys. So we've invited several automotive executives and engineers and who have accepted, and they'll, they'll be at the, at the CMI uh, Summit in Toronto. And, in fact, uh, we've got some fairly high-ranking people who are going to be on a panel with me, and we're going to discuss the current si supply situation and the future, and are there any glitches coming up? Of course, uh, automotive people, uh, no one's going to talk about competitive disadvantage, so they're all going to say everything is rosy. But uh, naturally, I'm going to bring up some some hard facts about supply and demand of these EV critical materials, and this is one not to miss. And well, I'll tell you what's surprising to me, Tracy. I I was not a motor supplier for decades. And I know that they don't want, that one company doesn't want to hear about uh, anything that will put them at a disadvantage to another. Yet in this case, everybody is eager to talk about this material problem. My opinion is that they have jumped into this very fast and are now trying to figure out where they are. They've committed something like several hundred billion dollars electrification of powertrains for vehicles over the next 10 years. Now they're trying to find out if they can do it. And th this is, in my opinion, this is an existential crisis for the North American automotive industry. And they, of course, don't want you to think like that because cars are now selling for an all-time high price. I read this morning, the average American car is selling for over $50,000, the average car. The average electric car is over $60,000. And believe this or not, the average payment is $777 a month. Just three years ago, it was $444. So here's my theory, and I'm gonna make a few unfriends now. Here's my theory. The automotive industry is making hay while the sun shines because they know it's, there's going to be some heavy rain coming up. All right, so let's flip to an actual rare earth supplier, Linus. Linus was in the news recently with uh, some news headlines having to do with Malaysia and mm -hmm. radioactive material. Can you give us kind of your summary on what has actually taken place? There, there, Linus is, has a problem right now with, with the Malaysian government in that it does not want to extend the the license they have to operate 
beyond June because Linus promised it by June it would have solved the uh, storage of, of radioactive materials uh, problem as, as the government saw it. Now, apparently that, again, the Malaysian government has said they will not extend the operating license unless that problem is resolved. The resolution of that problem that Linus has in the works is to build an ore processing plant at Kalgoorlie, Australia, nearby Mount Weld, where the material would be processed to remove the radioactive material and, and ship uh, probably a mixed carbonate to uh, Kwantan in Malaysia. The issue for Linus is, will the Kalgoorlie plant be ready to ship material to be on the ground in June so that the company can run off uh, inventory in July, which is approved for import into Malaysia. This is the big issue. I don't know the answer, but I'd like to ask Amanda Lacaze what she thinks. So again, Jack, we, we will put out another uh, interview request uh, because we are all very interested. Now, speaking of updates, uh, in the rare earth and critical mineral sector across the board right now. Are there any other highlights in the last week that you thought were quite memorable that stood out to you? And I hate to throw you under the bus here without preparation, but we talk about this every day. Uh, what's the, going on? Yeah, there's, there's a lot happening in the lithium space. Uh, we know that General Motors has committed $660 million to lithium Americas for their for their Nevada operation to bring it into operation. That doesn't mean they're going to hand them a check for 660. It means as as benchmarks are achieved in the business plan, General Motors will finance it because that is what the, the company needs to bring that brine uh, pool into into full operation. Of course, the material will go to General Motors. The, uh, yesterday, Piedmont Lithium uh, had uh, signed a uh, a purchase order. Uh, from uh, or accepted a purchase order from LG Energy Systems, the the Korean company that is the partner of General Motors in making batteries in in three factories now a building in the United States. So there's a hell of a lot going on, and you can see the automotive companies are very much involved in this. That's just lithium. Okay, uh, I'm not aware that the automotive companies have taken a hard look at the rare earth situation yet, although we know that General Motors has has already made a commitment to MP to supply it with a thousand tons of rare earth permanent magnets in 2025. And they are also helping to finance vacuum schmelz, the European producer of rare earth permanent magnets. So uh, to build a plant in the United States, there's a lot going on here. Well, Jack, as always, thank you so much for your update. And, uh, you know, let's do this more frequently. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.